I'm now going to do an example on mesh analysis, which sounds fancy enough, um, but practically it's just depend or relying on Kirchhoff's voltage laws to find the individual mesh currents and then solving for some unknown current. So to set up a question, Okay, so say we've been given the following circuit, and as you can see, it contains three meshes. One, two, three. Now, the first thing we want to do is to assign a mesh current to each of them. So we'll say the, the current, the isolated or individual current around here is going to be I1. The isolated current around here is going to be I2. And the individual or isolated current around here is going to be I3, and we've been asked to find this value um, Ix here. I'll just redraw subscript 2 a bit later. Okay, so a few things to recognize. Firstly, um, I1, you should hopefully be able to see, uh, is going to be exactly the same as um, 5 amps because they're flowing in the same direction and um, it's, it's on the edge, so there's nothing to combine it with. Uh, the current along this um, branch down here is a little trickier. It's going to be the current flowing down here minus the current flowing um, up here, or if you're taking it the other way, the current flowing up here minus the current flowing down here. So say we were taking it from here to here, it's going to be I1 minus I2, or the current flowing down minus the current flowing up is going to be the net current through that, that branch. Likewise, for um, this branch over here, the current flowing down minus the current flowing up is going to be I2 minus I3, um, which is going to give us Ix, which will be important for later. So we'll just make a note of that now. Ix equals I2 minus I3. And again, we have a um, current source on an edge piece here. However, this is flowing exactly opposite to our I3 direction, which means I3 is going to be negative this current source here. So I3 is going to be negative 2. Additionally, um, with mesh analysis you'll pretty much be using Ohm's law as um, the basis of it. pretty much every equation you do. So I'm just going to write them down here. Voltage equals IR, um, current equals V on R. And now that we've assigned um, three mesh currents, uh, we should also assign some polarities. Um, it doesn't matter which way you do this as long as you keep consistent with your current direction. So I'm going to say, um, focusing on this individual mesh, I'm going to call the bottom of my current source as negative and the top slash arrowhead as positive because um, current flows from highest potential to lowest potential, positive, negative, hopefully you can see. Um, individually, I'm going to call the this positive resistor positive end of the resistor, negative end of the resistor. It doesn't matter because as you'll see in this next one, I'm going to call this side the positive and this side the negative. Um, why I've done that is because I'm going to make an equation for each individual mesh and um, assigning polarities on resistors is arbitrary because no matter which way you go into a resistor, there's going to be a voltage drop there. Um, so anyway, yeah, there's going to be positive there, negative there, positive there, negative there, positive there, negative there, and positive there, negative there. Um, likewise, in this little, in this last section, I'm going to make it positive there, negative there, and the top of my um, voltage, oh sorry, current source, it's going to be positive, and bottom is going to be negative. Right, so using these three, three meshes and Ohm's law, V equals IR, I'm going to make three equations for each mesh. The first one, I1, well, that's just going to be 5 amps. The second one, I2, that's going to be a bit more tricky. I'll do that last um, because I already know that I3 is going to be negative 2 amps, as I just mentioned then. Okay, so I2, what do we have to do for Kirchhoff's voltage law slash mesh analysis is uh, starting at this point or starting at any point really, um, we're going to make, make up some equations containing each of these elements and it says voltage of this plus voltage of this plus voltage of this all has to sum up to zero. Okay, and also using Ohm's law, V equals IR is going to help, help us here because these aren't all voltage sources. We, we have to use some equations. Um, the volts, oh, sorry, I've also forgot to label the um, resistance here. The resistor is 
uh, 25 ohms on the left one and um, 20 ohms on the right. So V equals IR tells us positive because that's how we assigned it plus 25 ohms this is resistance and our current is going to be I2 remember because we're flowing from here um, up and minusing the uh, other side so I2 minus I1 I2 minus I1 this is our first voltage plus 30 that's um, resistor 1 plus resistor 2 Ri um, times I2 because this is just an isolated branch there's nothing adjacent to it so we don't need to worry about any current resisting this mesh current and for our final voltage on this side we're going to add 20 for our resistance and for our current it's going to be I2 minus I3 all right now just focusing on this equation because we need to find all the mesh currents to solve the problem um, we know I1 is 5 so that's going to be minus 5 and I3 is negative 2 so negative 2 negative 2 is plus 2 which gives us the equation I2 equals 25 I2 minus 5 in brackets plus 30 I2 plus 20 I2 plus 2 in brackets um, I'm going to expand now you'll notice we have um, one equation in one and so I'm just going to expand and simplify uh, I'll move this I2 over to the other side 0 equals negative I2 and expand the brackets plus 25 I minus 5 times negative 5 times 25 is negative 125 you have 125 um, plus 30 I2 plus 20 I2 plus 40 now I'm going to move these constant terms over to the other side and that'll give me 125 minus 40 which is equal to 85 and then I'm going to factorize all of these I2 terms on the right hand side so I've already taken care of those constants they're on the other side and they um, equal 85 so I2 um, if I take I2 out of this I get negative 1 um, that's not two there negative 1 plus 25 plus 30 plus, whoops wasn't meant to close the bracket we have one more I2 term plus 20 equals that and now if we sum all this stuff in brackets we should get 74 you can check that on a calculator yourself if you like and um, to isolate I2 or to solve for I2 we just divide both sides by the stuff inside the brackets aka 74 so we get I2 equals 85 over 74 which is about equal to one point or something excuse me uh, 74 yes 1.1 1 .1, oh, sorry 1.1486 da, da 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 okay so that gives us I2 we know I2 and I3 which was negative 2 in our initial problem we wanted to solve for Ix which is equal to uh, I2 minus I3 so after having found those two values um, we get Ix equals I2 minus I3 equals 1.1486 minus minus 2 which gives plus 2 and that equals 3.1486 so again a brief, an a brief uh, example of mesh analysis they can get incredibly tedious especially with a lot of a lot of simultaneous equations but hopefully this has provided a good intro for you to get started